Welcome to the 2023 Economic Preparation and Development Channel. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me on this January 1st, 2023. Just want to wish everyone out there a happy new year. May it be a blessed one and a prosperous one for your loved ones and family. And today, I just want to briefly talk about three topics. Uh, the inflation goals by the Federal Reserve Bank, the retail sales and hospitality travel sales that will be continuing to drop throughout the month of January as people get back on track with the financial goals and plans for the year. And what could possibly be the indicators for a recession heading into the summer and late of 2023 that we've been talking about since last year. So U.S. inflation dropping to 3% range by the end of 2023 is already, quote, baked in the data, says Adam Polson. This is MarketWatch.com article. Uh, he says that um, former Bank of England official says that he key unknowns are how high interest rates will go above 5.25% to get inflation all the way back to the Fed's 2% target. Well, real inflation, as we know, is above 7% right now. Uh, it's, and if you look at unofficial real inflation stats, it's really at 18 to 20% right now. So we have a long way to go to get back down to the intended target of 2%. And the markets are looking now, and they say the general consensus is that the market's looking six months in advance. And right now we see that the markets are priced in this kind of easing the rate hikes will continue right now the general consensus with the experts are the rate hikes will continue but at a slower pace and at a less uh dosage at a lesser dosage you know instead of a uh, 75 basis point maybe you get a 25 to 50 basis point coming up in february and all those different months um but this is going to take a long long time to decrease back down to two percent inflation at least the, their target and we know that by looking at the data because the inflation is barely moving down a couple of percentage points. But there's overall inflation, not just in food, gas and utilities, but we're seeing inflation across the board and the product, the price of production inputs for stores such as, um, you know, Walmart targets, Sam's Club, Costco's, uh, you name it, Winco's. Uh, Ralph's, those stores are having a hard time uh, keeping up with the, with the price of inflation because retail sales have fall down 0.6 percent in November. And, uh, you know, Americans are feeling the pressure from inflation. Savings rates have, in, uh, even though the savings rates um, have increased in terms of percentage points, it's still measly in compared to what they were giving back, um, you know, when, when rates were at normal rates, when interest rates were normal, interest rates were mortgage rates were normal at, you know, 7, 8, 10, 15, 12, 10, 12 percent. So this is going to be concerning heading into a part where weakest jobless claims did fail to 211,000. 211, so that's the good news, the bad news is that the jobs that are replacing the jobs that we lost are, are not of any quality, meaning that people have to work two and three jobs, um, either online or side hustle, or even at a physical job, two and three jobs, to try to make ends meet before the month ends. And so that's the bad part about it. The good news is, is that those weekly jobless claims are coming down, but the initial jobless claims, ladies and gentlemen, are going up. And that can only mean one thing here. That could mean that the global economy is heading into a recession. And right now, according to CNN Business, as you can see, we're at 33,000. People said, oh, but the thing you have to remember, too, is when we have these rallies, all of a sudden, you know, the Dow was down 200 points starting the day. The next thing, it rallies up to like 500 points, 600 points. You have to realize a lot of that's automation. AI is controlling the market. You know, algorithms. It's, it's computer-based. It's not necessarily human trading, per se. That's something to mention, too. And another thing to mention, too, is that... The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are only made up of a couple, handful of companies, and that's what's driving the markets, too. So these threes could dip us into a recession here. Um, the United States, Euro, and China leading the way. The central banks, that can lead the way into a recessionary period here. Uh, with their rate hikes or lack of slowing the rate hikes, they can lead us into a recession. China. China, Chinese government, with the COVID restrictions coming back now, as you know, um, in certain cities now. Um, they are the world's second largest economy. They can lead into a recession. Energy prices as well. You know, the price of natural gas, natural um, energy costs, gas itself. And that could be a, when there's a wild card. So these black swan events can lead us into the recessionary territory. What do you think? Do you think the stock market is poised to rally this year? Do you think crypto markets are poised to rally in the beginning of this year? What do you think? Are we headed towards a slump, a recession um, that could last? And if we are heading to a recession, do you think it's going to be just a two-year recession, a five-year recession, or a 10-year or longer recession? I'm of the camp 
then it's going to be a 10 year or longer recession because the US whole US economy has to reset from the tech sector to the business sector to the retail to government to private sector to um, international trade everything has to be reset even the debt level the derivatives and nobody's talking about these derivatives out there with Deutsche Bank and Credit Suisse and all these other companies uh, we have you know over over 200 uh, trillion and derivatives that could go bad either. So let me know what you think in the thoughts. Happy New Year. Stay blessed. Continue to develop and to ment- uh, develop and to uh, relax spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and most of all, continue to prepare your preps wherever that may be. Even if you're starting today with just ten dollars, you know, toward prepping goals, whether that's prepping for food, water, medicine, um, clothing, uh, be self-sufficient in energy. Uh, you know, whatever you can do would help out tremendously, um, as you know, and not just in America, if you're in Europe, if you're in uh, Asia, Africa, South America, everybody needs to prep because things could get bad. And the only thing that's going to change is the magnitude and scope of the problems, issues that you face. It's going to be different, but the issues are going to be the same at this time everywhere, not just in the U.S. or Europe or Canada or wherever you may be. So thank you for listening. I'll be back on more later on after the New Year's holidays with better, more updates in terms of where, the, where we're going in terms of the mortgage rates and other rates as well. Thank you for listening.